You, sir, mocked Cartman before, yet you two sit here demanding answers. Now, damn you, let him speak! Thank you, Cled. Holy cow! A relationship video that isn't about shipping? It's a miracle! Hi, I'm Kitty Monk. I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Cartman and Butters and their relationship. Originally, this video was meant to be all about Butters, as y'all have been begging for a Butters video. But while writing it, I realized that a good chunk of the script was all about Butters and Cartman. And how couldn't it be? Many of the greatest episodes of South Park come from Butters and Cartman, and they're hilarious hilarious yet parasitic dynamic. While I do want to make an overall video about Butters in the future, I still have so much material for these two that it's probably better I get to this first. Besides, it's hopefully the day after Thanksgiving and I need Christmas money. This was not a good month for me, work-wise, if you could not already guess. And nowadays on YouTube, the longer the video, the better. So let's discuss. In the world of South Park, there's two kids named Eric Cartman and Butters Stodge. Cartman, we all know about him. He makes the Antichrist look angelic, and according to Rebecca Sugar, he was the inspiration for Aquamarine from SU. Butters is another story. I've talked about his terrible mom and his bully, now it's time I talk about him. Butters Stodge is South Park's resident goody-goody, the boy who eats his apples and generally tries to follow the rules and stay out of trouble, unless Cartman is around, that is. Their relationship, if I had to describe it, is kind of like a fourth grade version of Beavis and Butthead and Stuart Stevenson. Cartman will want something or want to do something, usually immoral or illegal, and if he cannot get it out of the boys, he'll try to get it out of Butters. Like when Cartman tried to sell crappy jewelry on the Home Shopping Network, and when the boys did not want to do it, since they scammed Marvin and a bunch of other old people, he goes to Butters, even making him hold up the sign. Uh, for your lip Butters, what the f Sorry, my arm's hurt. My arm's hurt! Pick the f***ing sign up, Butters! This is a business! Oftentimes, Butters will be too naive or innocent to fight back until it's too late, and frequently ends up as Cartman's scapegoat. However, I'm not complaining. It's hilarious. And there are exceptions, which I'll get to later. This dynamic started all the way back in Season 6. After Kenny is killed off, the boys make Butters their new friend, starting in Jared Has AIDS. Hey, fellas! Hey, Kenny! No gosh darn it, my name's not Kenny. Kenny's dead, and you're all gonna have to learn to deal with that. Okay, not Kenny. The boys are enchanted by Jared Fogel, back before he did something super incredibly reprehensible that he deserves to suffer for. Jared Fogel, if you're like me and much too young to remember, was the spokesman. Did you just use a term that excludes women from an occupation? Did you just say spokesman instead of spokesperson when women are just as capable of selling sandwiches as anyone? I'm sorry, PC principal. I'm a woman. I thought I could say it. Apologies for my internalized misogyny. I'll watch my micro aggressions. Anyhow, Jerry did commercials for Subway, where he claimed he was morbidly obese, only to go on a diet of nothing but Subway sandwiches, which caused him to lose a great deal of weight. So they need him, only it turns out this was a great big lie. Read the fine print at the bottom of the screen. It says I only ate a half-size lean turkey sandwich with no mustard or mayo or anything like that, and then had proper diet and exercise aids. True, Jared was overweight, but he lost most of it through AIDS, aka assistance. I got AIDS about two years ago, and I've been losing weight ever since. It's amazing how slim you can get with AIDS. Scott is my personal trainer, and Tyler is my dietitian. Hello. Hello. The boys scheme to recreate Jared's success by making Butters gain weight and claiming he lost it all eating City Walk. <laughs> Damn it, Butters, keep eating or else I'll kick so you're deader than Kenny! But as expected, Butters doesn't lose the weight fast enough, so they're forced to resort to back alley liposuction. Shut Butters is your own damn fault. Ew, this scene always makes me nauseous. When this obviously fails, they just leave Butters there for Linda and Steven Chris to find. How many times have we told you never to have self-performed liposuction surgery in our house? Four times, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, don't you give us that look, young man. You're gonna get it. I have questions. Butters gets grounded, but the boys need him for another scheme. To his credit, he does stand up to them. At first, that is. And they're asking me to be in trouble, Dutch? Uh-uh. I'll never be that Dutch. Kenny would have done it. 
Well, Kenny would have exploded from the surgery, guys, and you would have gotten mad for like two seconds, and then spent the rest of the episode acting like he never existed. Carmen takes his place and stirs the pot, pretty much for fun. Where did you get that kind of smart mouth? Uh, not from you, that's for sure. Oh, you just wait till I get home, mister! I'll be waiting with bells on you old horse banging skank. When Butters returns home, he's glad he has such a good friend. Oh, it hurts. You're a real pal. Butters, it was my pleasure. Oh, it hurts so much to laugh. <laughs> Don't worry, it hurts Butters just as much. <laughs> hi, Mom and Dad. Don't you hi, Mom and Dad, us, you little punk. <laughs> what I do? What I do? However, this would not be the last time it happened. Usually whenever it does, Butters will get very hurt in the process, all while Cartman suffers little to no repercussions. However, it usually works because Butters is too innocent to know what's going on and always keeps a cheerful demeanor, such as in the death of Eric Cartman. I'm gonna get you out of here. Please leave me alone, Eric. My bottom is really sore. One night, after grocery shopping with Stan's family, Carmen commits the gravest of sins, eating all the skin off of KFC chicken before anybody else can have some. Carmen? You ate the skin off of every piece of chicken! Carmen, for that, you will be damned to the lowest ring of hell. Along with those people who have conversations on speakerphone and listen to TikToks in public. Kenny takes this the worst of all, probably because it's one of the few times he gets to actually eat something that is not school food. The boys have had it up to here with Cartman and decide to cut him off permanently by ignoring him. It's every time they try to tell him off, he does not listen. We're nice to him. I mean, we rip on him all the time. Yes, but he thrives on that. All right, then let's just ignore him. From now on, let's not talk to him, let's not even acknowledge him. Which, honestly, not gonna lie, is a great plan. One episode made the point that the reason you can't tell Cartman anything is because he engages in mental gymnastics. To a narcissist like him, ignorance is the worst punishment you could possibly bestow, simply because there's absolutely no way for him to fight it or to talk his way out of it. Y you guys know why Jews have glassy eyes? Here you go. Thanks. Dude, Stan, you, you know why Jews have glassy eyes? Like cow? However, once again, Cartman is a narcissist, so he doesn't get the message that they're put up with him. And because of other circumstances, like Leanne Kang the plumber, literally, <laughs> he assumes he died from eating the KFC, and he's now a ghost. And that's why nobody will talk to him. <laughs> what is that kid doing? I don't know, just ignore him. For one reason or another, the kids never let Butters in on the truth. Well, I mean, he's Butters. He sort of flies under the radar. So when Cartman goes to Butters, he thinks he's some kind of a medium. How do you know you're not supposed to go to, you know, heck? I'm not going to heck, Butters. I'm not black, all right? Uh oh. A medium so powerful that he actually makes a supposedly real one quake with fear. I see ghosts all the time. When's the last time you saw yours? Well, he's sitting next to me right now. Butter suggests that Carmen make peace with his loved ones before he can move on, including an admittedly really touching moment with Leanne. Tell her that I wish. I wish I would have been a better son sometime. He wishes he would have been a better son sometime. It's, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I love you too, Poopykins. <laughs> However, Cartman is still stuck, so he decides the only way to pass on is to do good deeds. Did you ever do anything really bad? Not really. Not because he's actually repentant, and he does it through its hasteful montage, which does give us the occasional callback. Unfortunately, this episode aired before The Good Place made the point that moral deserve guarantees you a ticket to hell. Now while this is going on, Linda and Steven witness Butters talking to Carmen, and usually through comedic circumstances, assume Butters is talking to himself or having hallucinations. Butters, what is going on? What's up? Well, he was... Nothing. I just had a nightmare. 
Well, you better stop having nightmares or else you're going to be grounded. Because, you know, Butters is not a free-thinking kid who has several personas. Clearly, he has dissociative identity disorder. Wait, that was an episode. I should discuss that one day. They try to reassure Butters there is no ghost in their own special way. There's my imagination then? That's right. There's no reason to be afraid of things that aren't real. There's plenty of real things to be scared of. Like Super 8. Yeah, Butters, you better stay away from dirty needles and unprotected wieners. It's a good thing you would need HIV first in order to develop AIDS. However, as expected, Butters gets caught one time too many. I don't know if we should ground him or call a doctor. No, I think you better call a doctor. I'll ground him. Eventually, instead of just calling Leanne to confirm the story, they take him to a psychologist. Now, when you're on the therapy circuit, you're probably familiar with the intake session, where you say what your problem is, you give your background, and generally try to start to form a diagnosis. Often, this takes no more than 20 minutes. Yeah, the stodges either don't care, or they don't have good insurance. The psychologist gives his diagnosis. Your son is suffering from severe dementia. This is usually a sign of schizophrenia brought on by some tragic event in the child's past. Instead of simply asking Butters questions, he has his own method of evaluation. Don't worry, Mr. Stutch. Whatever traumatized your son in his past will find it. Oh, they will find it. Doctors who aren't you, I mean. Maybe this is why you're out of network. Elsewhere, Cartman discovers that a Red Cross is being held hostage and is told by a psychic that if he is able to save the hostages, he'll be able to cross over because Cartman does not have the money or the resources to reach a basement in the Alamo. Cartman tries to help them. <laughs> One of my favorite moments from Cartman, hands down. And he is somehow successful. The hostages are gone! What? Cartman seems to have developed a sense of humility, even treating Butters with respect and courtesy. We both kind of needed each other, and, well, I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you too, ghost pal. Sadly, status quo is a thing. The boys tell Carmen that they forgive him, and Carmen realizes he was never a ghost, so he did good things for nothing. You told me I was a ghost! But I thought you were one! How stupid are you? So help me God, Butters, I'm gonna get you back for this. I'm going to get you back! I mean, when you do good things, obviously you do it with the expectation of getting a reward. Butters! Oh, hamburgers. So there goes 22 minutes worth of development. Once again, whenever Butters deals with Cartman, he ends up on the short end of the stick. Probably the wrong phrase to use considering last episode, but there are times when Butters sticks to his guns and gets rewarded for it. In super fun time, the kids go to Pioneer Village, one of those old-timey reenactment towns, and Garrison makes them buddy up and hold hands. All right, kids, this is a big place, so I want everyone to pick a partner to hold hands with. Why? I think the kids will be fine. Nobody is gonna get lost here. And no kid over the age of seven likes to hold hands. Thanks to the process of elimination, Cartman gets stuck with Butters. Because let's be real, if you were a child, would you want to hold hands with Cartman? Think of all the stuff he's touched, and the fact that I doubt he has even heard of soap or water or hand sanitizer. Garrison also orders Butters to... Butters? You are not to let go of Eric's hand until you are both back on that bus. Do you understand? I understand. And boy, does he follow this to a T. Finally, let go of my hand. Teacher said I can't let go till we're back on the bus. Well, which is it going to be, Butters? Are you going to ditch out with me or are you going to disobey the teacher's stupid rule? I'm not letting go. Carmen insists they ditch this snooze fest and go to the nearby Super Fun Time arcade, which coincidentally does not share its name with the episode. At Super Fun Time, Butters insists on holding Cartman's hand to the astounding glare of onlookers. One, please. Make that two. Aw, aren't you too cute holding hands? Are you special little buddies? No! But Cartman doesn't let that stop him and has a super fun time. All while Butters stands there with his hand outstretched. Imagine the sweat. While this is going on, Pioneer Village is being held up by a group of diehard fanatics, which I'm not going to get into. I don't want to spoil the A plot. Technically, by listening to Cartman, Butters avoided potentially dying or getting hurt. When they return, they see the police. Butters, calm down. I know a way out of this. You just got me busted forever. 
Herman thanked Pioneer Village, noticed they were missing, and called the cops, which, not gonna lie, that's not an unreasonable suspicion. They decide to sneak back into the museum and pretend they never left. Once again, they do this while Butters insists on holding Cartman's hand. It goes about as well as expected. Oh, too lame. They do manage to make it back inside, although they get held up. And this determination almost gets them both killed. Shut up! Put your hands behind your head! Do it now! Oh, teacher said we have to hold hands the whole time we're here! Let go, or else I'll put a bullet through your hands and make you let go! Look, Cartman is a D-bag, but this is like the one episode where I would have listened to him. Dang, Butters, mad props. The diehard people are dealt with, and at 5 p.m., Pioneer Village closes, and the class makes it back onto the bus, safe and sound, but mentally scarred. All in all, it was a fun day, and Butters upheld the rules. <laughs> Teacher, my partner is back on the bus. Don't worry, this is not the only time his ignorance has paid off. In the China problem, Butters goes with the boys, minus Cartman, to see the new Indiana Jones movie, which I can't comment on because I've never seen it. I was like eight years old when that movie came out, but I should get around to it. Wasn't the guy who played Harold Siddler in that movie? The boys decide that the movie is so bad, it's the equivalent of watching one of your best friends getting brutally assaulted and you standing around and not doing anything to help. Thank goodness YouTube is hella strict, but please check out this episode, it's actually kind of funny. Butters is the only one who liked the movie. We can't help him now, but I thought it was pretty good. You know what? I'd probably be the same. Sometimes I have a soft spot in my heart for terrible things. Or I look at it and wonder, wow, what could have been? Elsewhere, Carmen has a nightmare that because of the Beijing Summer Olympics, the Chinese will use this opportunity to take over the world. Because this is Carmen, he doesn't just think the Chinese government will do it, but the Chinese people as a whole. There's two billion of them and their economy is getting better and with their advances in technology, they're going to bring down America. <laughs> he decides the dream is a premonition and teams up with Butters on the same day he was going to make a model car with his dad. We have to stop the Chinese now. Oh, I can't stop the Chinese tonight, Eric. I'm supposed to make a model car with my dad. Dude, Steven usually isn't this nice to Butters. Can your infiltration plan wait a day or two? <laughs> Fine, have it your way. Cartman decides to stop the incoming invasion the only way he knows how, by becoming the enemy, which means dressing up like something out of a Looney Tune short. Oh, hello, please. Bing bao, ching chong. Bing bing, hello, please. And going to P.F. Chang's. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What? It's already started. White people in here working for the Chinese. They're selling out their own country! Carmen, if the Chinese wanted to take over the world, which I doubt they do because world conquest is boring, why would they go to a P.F. Chang's? Don't you know how expensive that place is? Water is like six bucks. Wait, what better hiding place? Nobody ever goes inside. There, Cartman notices a Chinese family eating dinner. So nice to see other Chinese people! As you can see, we are Chinese people ourselves. Which this might sound like a weird comment, but I think this was a huge missed opportunity for a joke. Guys, this is Cartman. It would be equally funny if he sees the family and he's like, Oh crap, Butters, it's the Chinese. And the family's like, um, we're actually Japanese or something like that. And Cartman acts accordingly. Hey, King of the Hill did it in a way that honestly wasn't all that offensive. Regardless, he nearly blows his cover. Oh my god, the Chinese are here. Okay, I'm freaking out. Be calm, Eric. They're right over there, and they're gonna start screaming and banging on those drums, and then they're gonna- Thank you, Butters. Cartman thinks they've been spotted and forces Butters to help him hold the restaurant hostage. We saw the Olympic opening ceremonies. The gig is up. Everyone just step over that wall. I mean it. Butters is forced to hold a gun, only despite having zero combat experience, he's somehow an expert marksman, because every time he shoots somebody, be they a patron or a cop, he always manages to shoot them in the nads. Dude, what the f are you doing? What? What happened? God damn it, Butters, what did I say about shooting guys in the d 
Aw, I did it again. Eventually, Carmen gets so annoyed, solely on this principle alone, that he decides to call the whole operation off. And the only reason he doesn't go to jail for life is next to being a minor, the other boys unintentionally brought justice to the characters of Lucasfilms. They championed a lawsuit against Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, and they were eventually caught with their pants down. Oh, I, love, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> The police, and pretty much the entire town, are too distracted to notice Carmen and Butters making a break for it. Can't believe they put him in jail. I thought that movie was pretty good. I guess George Lucas got revenge on the boys because in prison, he eventually sold the studio to Disney for Beku Bucks. Now, something I've wondered is why does Cartman take advantage of Butters? Outside of it being funny, is it because he's jealous of Butters? Who knows? Honestly, if we're being serious, I think the easiest answer is just Butters is an easy target and he never fights back. But it goes without saying that Cartman is not the only person who takes advantage of Butters. In fact, it's equally funny when everybody does it. In Margarine, the boys notice the girls playing with a future telling device. B L U E. I pick another color. Red. Okay. Okay. Will Bebe live in a big mansion in the future? Definitely yes. Cootie catchers used to look like that. For us, we just folded up a piece of paper and do a button. The boys think cootie catchers are some kind of magic device with untold power. How does it know the answer? I don't believe it. Believe it! The girls can ask it any question they want and it gives them an answer. Heidi Turner, free Eric Cartman, is holding a sleepover, and the boys know for certain she'll have the cootie catcher. Because most sleepovers are drawn on gender lines, this runs into a conundrum. How are they gonna get in? Well, the easiest way is to obviously disguise a boy as a girl, pretend they're a new student, and then use newbie privileges to get into the sleepover. You mean like that movie, Do You Want a Man? No, not like you want a man, Kevin, okay? Kevin, goddammit. However, that's another problem. One, either that kid is gonna get recognized, or two, the girls are gonna wonder what happened to the kid. Because you can't just say they're out sick with the flu or went on a week-long vacation to Aunt Flo's. Kids are smarter than that. So they decide to fake that candidate's death. And whose do they choose? Well, I'm sure you know based on this video. You better come quick. Your son is down at the Bowery Building threatening to kill himself. What? And because they have to get the dead pig ready- We don't have the dead pig quite ready yet. Oh my god, where did you get that? Butters has to stall. Just come down now, son, and we promise we won't ground you for more than a couple weeks. Yep, that totally helps. Hmm, to get grounded or to die. Okay, one, two- Jesus Christ! Now, I will say once again that even if Linda and Steven suck, their grief seems to be real, and it's a little hard to watch. No, Butters! No! Don't put him down there! Don't put him down there! But then I remember how they sold their son to Paris Hilton, so I don't feel all that bad. Besides, they don't learn a lesson here either. Butters goes to school the next day, but before he arrives, I just want to play you this one moment. Now, I know that we're all still in deep, deep mourning over the tragic death of our classmate Butters. Who's Butters? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to do all this. He could have just went to school dressed up like that and said he was a new kid and nobody would care. This did not need to happen. And wow, two infiltration episodes in a row. It's purely coincidental I did not plan this. Butters, under his new identity of Margarine, that's smart, introduces herself to the class. Why don't you tell the children a little about yourself, Margarine? I like dancing and ponies and and getting my snooch pounded on Friday nights. How many times did you rehearse that speech? That girl sure has a strange sense of fashion. Yeah, I know. Those red shoes don't go. Remove the flower in that red square, and that outfit is perfectly acceptable otherwise. Margarine tries to integrate with the girls. Where do you buy your clothes? Oh, uh, you, you know, girl places. 
<gasps> like Primark? They're so cheap. Several days later, Heidi goes to get ready for the sleepover, but receives some disturbing news from her mother. Marjorie will be attending. She said Marjorie is having a really hard time being in a new school. And besides, her mother told me that she works as a state official and that I should respect her authority. Did she also try to speak to you in German? The boys send Butters into the sleepover, but he is completely at a loss of proper girl etiquette, especially after they start to play light as a feather, stiff as a board. 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 Ah, yes, when I was a kid and I went to sleepovers, we always tried to summon demons. We totally never did normal stuff like watch High School Musical or eat pizza. How is that terrifying to you, Butters? You've seen worse. The girls make fun of margarine because honestly, girls can be evil. In a good way, of course. Boys use fists. Girls, we go right for the jugular. You're going to live alone your entire life because you're a nerdy, dorky geek. Yeah, and your hair is totally stupid. Yeah, and you're flat! Yeah, Bebe knows what she's talking about. She got her own episode, and she nearly destroyed society. Butters goes off to cry in the bathroom, and the girls realize they did a bad thing. And honestly, it feels like he's not acting. Like, this is coming from a place. <laughs> Nobody likes me. <laughs> You don't know how hard it is to be me. And what's sadder is he is not totally wrong. The girls decide to give Marjorie a makeover, and soon Butters actually has fun, much to the boys' anger. Honestly, Butters is probably better off with the girls. <sighs> Kid politics. The girls get comfortable enough to show him the future telling device. Stay back! I had a great time tonight, but I gotta do what I was sent here to do. Butters does his job and runs off. The girls are absolutely bewildered. Anybody have a piece of notebook paper so I can make another one? Butters succeeds, but he has had it up to here. That town device is nothing but trouble. I'm done, and I'm going home to tell my mom and dad I'm not dead. Sadly, Butters finds that life at home is not all that better. When he was gone, Stephen received news about a Native American burial ground, which has the potential to bring dead things back to life, and he is repeatedly warned not to go. Don't bury your son's body at the Indian burial ground, Starch. The one that's right up over there, behind the Anderson's barn. But Linda is so upset that he digs up the corpse and does the ritual. Butters, smell like bacon. Don't worry, we're gonna bring you back, son. We're gonna bring you back! Now, I've seen this episode a million times, but I'm still surprised that only Butters comes back, especially considering this type of show. But anyhow, Butters returns, and his parents, having read Stephen King, assume he's some weirdo zombie freak. Oh god, it's terrible! What have I done? Uh, I guess well, you're probably a little surprised to see me. It isn't right! Make it go away! So they lock him in the basement and feed him Rachel from Quality Curtains. Can't I just have some SpaghettiOs? Butters, just picture Rachel's blood and guts is SpaghettiOs. They both taste like orc, but this is not the worst of all. In Casa Bonita, Kyle's birthday is coming up, and Sheila says he can bring three friends to the titular restaurant, which just so happens to be Cartman's favorite spot, and a real-life restaurant that Matt and Trey bought, but it's currently under renovation. Cartman is excited to go. Casa Bonita, Casa Bonita, food and fun and a festive atmosphere, Casa Bonita. Who said I'm inviting you? Instead of Cartman, Kyle decides to invite Butters, because Butters might be a giant goofball, but he's a much better friend. Butters isn't a total d to me. I have never been a d to you. Oh, please. All you ever do is call me names and rip on me for being Jewish. Kyle, when have I ever ripped on you for being a Jew? The better question is, when hasn't Cartman called him names and ripped on him for being Jewish? Cartman schemes to be a better friend to Kyle, so he'll be forced to take him, but all of his attempts fail. Eventually, Kyle tells Cartman that if Butters fails, he's welcome to take his spot. As a result, Cartman schemes to do away with Butters, which means making him think the apocalypse is forthcoming via a meteor. Sometimes it takes your eyes a minute to adjust. No, but I don't see it. Whoa, wait! Oh my god! I see it! I see it! 
It's a meteor! Oh my god! Oh my god! In Butters, being the ever-trusting sap he is, buys it hook, line, and sinker. He takes Butters to Jimbo's bomb shelter and tells him that he'll survive the nuclear blast that's soon to follow. Stay down here until you hear word from me. And pray, Butters. Pray for all mankind. Cartman goes to take Butters' place, but Linda and Steve and Chris show up to deter his plans. We know, but... He hasn't been home since last night. The police have been looking everywhere, but... <laughs> Maybe he was abducted by Frederick Johnson under the alias of the Ghost of Human Kindness. Kyle decides that it isn't right to go if Butters is missing, and they suspend the trip to Casa Benita. Oh, God damn it! How am I going to keep Butters down in that bomb shelter for a whole week? Oh no! Another kidnapping? Looks like they're gonna have to build another Great Wall! Alert the Mongolians! Since the police mean to search for a bomb shelter, Cartman has to enact Plan B. Lock Butters in a refrigerator. Oh, but Kitty, wouldn't Butters have to leave the bomb shelter? And wouldn't he see that everything's alright? <laughs> Don't worry, Cartman has that covered. Don't open this door for anybody, Butters! No matter what you hear, stay inside for four days! Dude, you can't lock Butters in a fridge. One, I think they have a failsafe so he could free himself, which I think he ends up doing. And two, did you not watch Punky Brewster? Cartman was totally willing to kill Butters just to go out to dinner. Eh, I can understand that. I love food. However, Butters gets free, like I told you, as they're driving to Casa Bonita. Oh my god. Oh my god, the meteor took out everything! It's all destroyed! Just as they're outside, the police call Sheila. Yes, Eric Cartman is with us. Why? Oh, really? What? Yes, I will certainly let him know. Thank you. Rather than have this all be for nothing, Cartman is forced to speed run through Casa Bonita. You made an entire town panic, you lost all your friends, and now you're going to Juvenile Hall for a week. <laughs> Was it worth it? Totally. I mean, Cartman snuck Disney World into Juvie, and he's friends with Romper Stomper. And since Josh, the toilet paper kid, is not there anymore, it should practically be a vacation to him. But these examples aside, do you want to know the worst thing Cartman's done to Butters? Like, moral event horizon worse? Like, worse than turning some kid's parents into chili? Cartman has assaulted Butters more than once. No joke. In Cartman Sucks, we learn that Cartman invites Butters over for sleepovers, so he can take embarrassing pictures of him. One such picture involves putting Butters' wiener in his mouth while Butters is asleep, which it constitutes assault, I'm sorry. Because the boys are so young and this show runs on black comedy, they don't see it for what it is and tell Cartman off. How is putting Butters' wiener in your mouth getting him? Because that makes Butters gay now! No, dude, that makes you gay. <laughs> what? Thanks to insane troll logic, Cartman tries to get Butters to do the same to him, to cancel it out, aiding the process with a blindfold. Well, you're not gonna uh, stick something yicky in my mouth, are you? I swear on my mother's life, Butters. I'm not going to stick anything yicky in your mouth. Thankfully, Steven walks in on them while Cartman sprints away. Hey, Dad! Butters, what are you doing? I'm getting a surprise! Sure, Butters doesn't have to get a surprise, but this is also kind of bad. Steven and Father Maxi think that Butters is by curious and confused. Which, yes, he is confused, but not in the way they're thinking. Is that true, son? Are you feeling confused? Yeah, I'm pretty confused, all right. Plus, this is 2007. Not that this does not happen nowadays, sadly, but they decide the only solution is to send Butters to a conversion camp. You know that camp we fought Luz was gonna get sent to? The secluded camp where lots of bi-curious boys are all put together? That sounds like a good idea. Oh boy, camp! Now back when I made the worst mom in South Park video, I was originally going to include this episode. Most of the stotch abuse is so funny it's absurd, yet realistically, this is one of the worst things they have done to Butters. But the Mandela effect happened, and after watching the episode, I remembered Linda was not in it. Or rather, she was, but it was a super quick cameo. Most of the punishment comes from Steven. What's going on, you two? Nothing, mom, I'm just a little bit curious.
Therefore, it got put on the back burner. Now, I get to talk about it, and it relates to the episode, so I am allowed to give my thoughts on something sort of political. Conversion camps, if you're unaware, are camps that try to cure your afflictions, if you catch my drift. As the minister describes, Right now, you're like a paperclip. And just like a paperclip, God needs to bend you and shape you and make you straight. Yep, it's as wrong as you think it is. Conversion camps are often religious in nature, and the camp they portray in the episode is actually kind of tame. Compared to what happens in real life, it can get to be super intense, but I suggest doing your own research because I don't have enough time to talk about it here. If you want to know more, watch the movie Boy Erased. Fun fact, Colorado banned conversion therapy in 2019, over 10 years after this episode aired. Hey, progress. Butters has to go to a camp for boys like him, where every five minutes, a camper unalives himself, including Butters' roommate. We've got another one, room 22. Oh, darn it. Butters gets an accountability buddy named Bradley, who just wants to be fixed. Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Leviticus 18.22. Now, this episode is horrific, but like in typical South Park fashion, it's hilarious. I think it helps that nobody bothers to ask Butters himself what he was doing or explain to him what by curious means. Like when the preacher finds Bradley with a Sears catalog, got him old, and scolds him and then scolds Butters for not properly watching him. This is what makes you confused. Don't you get it? This is confusing you right now, isn't it? Yes, it's all very confusing. You both do understand that we're trying to save your souls from eternal life in hell? Depends. Is this episode before or after Best Friends Forever? Why is it whenever I review Sal Park, I always make a Mormon joke? Bradley and Butters are made to do penance for the deed by writing scripture. And Butters says that he likes Bradley. You like like me? Sure, I like like you a lot, Ron. <laughs> Oh god, we're both unfixable! This communication pushes Bradley off the edge, and he decides to jump off a bridge. Butters, as Bradley's accountability buddy, tries to talk him down. Otherwise, he'll get in trouble. And also because Bradley is his friend. Butters gives a great speech, and this inspires Bradley. Because if I'm that curious, and I'm somehow made from God, then I figure God must be a little by curious himself. Through the power of Christ, we have saved this child. Shut up! This is your fault! Steven realizes how wrong he was and decides to take Butters out of the camp. I like being back curious. Well, you know something? So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now I am confused. Well, Butters, you did catch your father in the act. I'm surprised you don't remember. But what about Cartman? Oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry one bit. Cartman tries to find the photo, and in the process, he ends up showing it at school, thinking he'll somehow stop Kyle. Eric, what the hell is this? What this is, is a statement against the war in Iraq. It's wrong that we still have our troops there. It's wrong! Eventually, Mr. Mackey sets the record straight, after Carmen spent the entire episode acting like an A-word. Kyle didn't have it after all. Found it under your desk. She said you'd know what that means, okay? Well deserved. However, I have to finish off the video by mentioning the best Butters episode, hands down, presenting Awesome-O. Now, I had my doubts about this episode, and I'll be honest, I only watched it for this review, but I was slacking. It's like the confess -a bear joke from Spongebob, if that was a full-on episode. Carmen dresses up as Awesome-O, a robot who promises to be Butters' best friend. He means to do it to find out any embarrassing secret, but this ends up being more trouble than it's worth. Butters reveals that he doesn't like how Eric picks on him, but he has insurance. Cause what Cartman doesn't know is that I know one of his secrets. He likes to dress up like Britney Spears and pretend he's her. He sings and dances around with a life-size cutout of Justin Timberlake. I've got the whole thing on tape, even him making out with the Justin Timberlake cutout. When did this happen? Cartman decides to stick around to try and destroy the tape, but has to keep up the ruse, which means acting like a robot, literally. In fact, he goes without eating for so long that he has to resort to toothpaste. Osimo! <laughs> Osimo is coming! Osimo is Butters' best friend, but Butters treats Osimo more like a servant. Kind of like how Cartman treats him. Case in point, Butters has a chronic condition and has to take a suppository, so he makes Osimo do it for him. It'll be so much easier having you do it from now on. Um, actually, Osimo was not programmed for that function. 
Uh, it's real easy, I'll show you. <laughs> Later when Osimo misbehaves, he punishes him. Well, I'm gonna have to give you a spanking, Osimo, so that you learn better. And just know, Osimo, that I did it because I love you. Okay, this gives me questions. Linda and Steven know that Cartman is inside of Osimo, but just assume it's a fun game and play along. Butters has to go see his Aunt Nellie and forces Osimo to tag along. Too bad Aunt Nellie lives in California, which I've never been to, but I've heard is hot. They go to a movie studio where Osimo unintentionally charms everybody and gets a job coming up with movie ideas. Adam Sandler is like, in love with some girl, but then it turns out that the girl is actually a golden retriever or something. Wasn't that an episode of It's Always Sunny? Oh, and Carbon does not get paid for any of this because Butters donates it all to charity. The military thinks that Osimo is some kind of a machine that develops sentiments, and they decide to reprogram him. But some rigmarole happens, and Carbon gets found out. Wait, wait a minute, did, did that robot just fart? Hey. Robots don't fart. Hang on a second here. <gasps> Butters, like usual, keeps up his end of the deal. Hey, I've got Justin, I've got you. Come on, Justin, touch my body. Ooh, Justin, yeah. Touch my body, you and me. Check out my nice hot body. Honestly, this episode reminds me of the Strangler from SpongeBob. Was Butters just being his usual cheerful self, but didn't realize until the end? Or did he know all along and just went to see how far he could go with this? Or was it a mix of both? Oh well, does not matter. Now, I might be missing an episode or two, like I really wanted to talk about The Last of the Mexicans, but for now, that's Carmen and Butters. It's a strange dynamic, but one that produces a lot of amazing episodes. I don't think I've ever seen a Carmen Butters episode that I Dislike. Maybe I think one or two things could have been done differently, but hey, they're essentially nitpicks. Plus it helps that in the future, Butters will get his dream job, and Cartman will... We can't spend another holiday feeling bad for Eric. There's nothing that could have changed the path he was on. F*** you, Butters! F*** you, Eric! 